Welcome to Walking in the Word, the biblical teaching arm of the Women World Leaders podcast. I'm your host, Julie Jenkins. I'm so happy that you are here with us today. Summer is upon us here in the United States, which for many means a change of routine. I hope that your change of routine means a closer walk with God. God is always calling us nearer, no matter what our relationship with him is. He wants more of you. We, are, we at Women World Leaders are here to help you walk a bit closer to God. We offer our podcast three times a week. On Mondays, founder Kimberly Hobbs hosts Empowering Lives with Purpose, a 30-minute interview with a different woman of faith who shares her God's story, empowering you to walk in your God-given calling. On Fridays, Lauren Dean hosts Celebrating God's Grace, where she shows the, shares the joyful stories of the Lord's provision in women world leaders and beyond. And today, Wednesdays, I have the privilege of walking through the Bible with you. Currently, we are studying the Gospels chronologically and asking God to show us what He wants us each to know for our lives today. Besides podcasts, we have so many other opportunities for you to grow in your faith and to push forward in your walk with Christ. I invite you to visit our website, www.womenworldleaders.com, where you can check out all that is happening. We have books available for purchase, a free magazine, Voice of Truth, that you can download digitally and sign up to receive in your mailbox if you live in the United States. We have teachings, monthly meetings where we can worship, celebrate, and learn together, a prayer wall, and daily devotions. We would love for you to join us because no matter where you are, you are called to be a women world leader. Allow me to pray for us before we begin. Dear Most Holy God, we come to you seeking your face today. God, each week we are privileged to open your word together, and each week we marvel at what you teach us. So we come expectantly, knowing that you, the creator of all, walking with us, will guide us into truth. We give you this time and ask that you cleanse us of our sins, that we might sit at your feet and hear your voice. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Today's scripture told to us in Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 through 8, Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, and Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through 26, has quite the cast of characters, including Jesus, a homeowner, a crowd of people, some Pharisees and teachers of the religious law, and a paralyzed man and his four friends. As we read, I want us to look at the scene from the vantage point of these different characters and see what we can learn. Let's begin from the gospel, by reading from the Gospel of Mark in the New Living Translation. When Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of the religious law were sitting there, thought to themselves, what is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. So he asked them, why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven or stand up and pick up your mat and walk? So I will prove to you that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, 
and go home. And the man jumped up, grabbed his mat, and walked out through the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, we've never seen anything like this before. Well, right off the bat, we find out that Jesus is traveling and is staying in someone's home. We don't know whose home, but we do know that the homeowner is pretty gracious. Not only does he allow Jesus to stay with him, but as Jesus' reputation preceded him, many people gathered at this man's home. In fact, Mark tells us that his home was so packed with visitors that there was no more room, even outside the door. And then, as if having a visitor staying with him and having his home filled with wall-to-wall people wasn't enough, suddenly the man's roof is destroyed. Homes in Capernaum were built with roofs made of cross beams and filled in with mud and straw. You can imagine that a roof of this type was not long-lasting. In fact, it likely had to be redone every year. Can you imagine what a pain that would be to have to redo your roof every year? It wasn't as if the homeowner could just let it go either. A roof is a pretty essential part of a home. Now, I have read some commentaries that say that because of the fact that the roof had to be done yearly, it probably wasn't that big of a deal that there was suddenly a big hole in it. But come on, (laughs) you'd have to be a saint to not be a bit frustrated that someone dug a mat size hole in the roof of your home. Or maybe... You just have to be focused on something or someone that was more important. Let's talk about the crowd. Who knows how many people came, so many people pressing in, trying to get as close to Jesus as possible. Homes in that day did not have much in the way of windows, so to hear and see Jesus, the people needed to be inside the home. So they pushed in. There were so many that some couldn't get in the door. So they stood outside, expectant. Expectant for what? A healing, a solid teaching, just to see what all the talk of Jesus was about? Luke tells us the Lord's healing power was strongly with Jesus. Likely each person was there for his or her own reason, but each person had a story a reason why he or she came to see Jesus. They were expectant. And then there was the paralyzed man on the mat. I've always wondered what his thoughts were as he was lowered into the house. Did he even want to see Jesus? Or was he just brought there? He was lying on a mat, probably a cheap mattress, maybe just a bag filled with straw that he knew far too well. Others would have looked at his paralysis as a result of his sins. Can you imagine what a number that would do on your emotional well-being? Did he search his heart daily for what sin he could have committed that would that had left him lying there, unable to stand upright? If so, did he feel unworthy to see a teacher of the word? Had he accepted his fate or did he hope for healing? We don't know what he was expecting because it wasn't his actions at all that brought him to Jesus. But I bet he had a seed of hope that something would change for him that day. Enter the four friends, each carrying a corner of the mat. Have you you ever carried a grown person? When my dad was sick with brain cancer, he had to be carried out of the house to hospice. And I watched the men carrying him, just amazed at their strength. And they had great equipment. These four men were carrying a full grown man on a cheap mat. And likely they weren't carrying him a short distance. Who knows how far they had to walk to get to Jesus. They went expecting healing for their friend. And when they got there, the crowd was so thick that they couldn't even get near the front door. They didn't let that stop them, though. Determined, they went up the outside of the stairs to the home, to the, to the thatched roof, and began digging. They came to Jesus expecting healing for their friend. Then there were the Pharisees and the teachers of the religious law. Luke says they were sitting nearby, and he has a parenthetical phrase that says, It seemed these men showed up from every village in all Galilee and Judea, as well as from Jerusalem. 
They had heard of Jesus. They didn't just happen to be there. The Pharisees were one of several religious parties within Judaism, made up primarily of middle-class businessmen and merchants who strictly followed the written law of the Old Testament and made sure everybody else did as well. Jesus came into contact with the Pharisees quite frequently throughout his ministry, and he condemned them for focusing on the outward requirements of the law and not looking at the heart. So these guys seem to have a front row seat to the action. They, like the others in the crowd, came to see Jesus. But their reason for seeking Jesus was different. It seems these men were jealous of Jesus. They saw their own control and authority threatened as people flocked to Jesus. And they came expecting to regain their own standing. And then there was Jesus himself, (laughs) all these people coming to him and him knowing the reason that each person had for being there. He taught those who pushed in close, giving them what they came for. But as he taught, dirt and straw began falling on his head. The sky appeared where the roof had been, and down came a man on a mat who was there for more than the teaching. It was at that point that Jesus surprised them all, giving them more than they could have ever expected. He gave the paralyzed man what he had ultimately come to earth to give us all, forgiveness for sins. The homeowner, who never winced at the hole in the roof, gained a realization of the importance of people over things. The crowd who made room for the man on the mat got more than a teaching that day. They became witnesses to a miracle from God himself. The Pharisees and the scribes, well, (laughs) they were downright smug. They thought they were getting exactly what they came for, a way to trap Jesus. Luke records, Jesus said to the man, young man, your sins are forgiven. But the Pharisees and teachers of the religious law said to themselves, who does he think he is? That's blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Blasphemy is claiming to be God and the penalty per the law, which the Pharisees and the scribes would have known well, is as written in Leviticus 24, 15 and 16, was death. So they called Jesus out. But Jesus gave them more than they expected. He told them, I know you know the law that only God can forgive. I will prove to you that I am God. Jesus knew what they thought. He knew why they had come. But Jesus used this opportunity to give them what they needed, which was far beyond what they expected. He healed the man's paralysis, proving that he was indeed God. And just to make sure they understood the proclamation that was being made by his actions, Jesus called himself the Son of Man. The man on the mat got a twofold healing that he likely couldn't have imagined that very morning. He jumped up, picked up his mat, and went home praising God. The man's friends saw their friend healed. Talk about having a lighter load on the way home. The crowd and the homeowner, despite the hole in the roof, got more Then the teaching they came for as they witnessed the miracles. Luke says, everyone was gripped with great wonder and awe, and they praised God, exclaiming, we have seen amazing things today. And the Pharisees and the scribes, they got what they came for too, (laughs) a reason to continue their jealousy and anger. Jesus has much to offer you and me, and no matter what reason draws us to him, he will always fulfill our deepest needs and give us exceedingly and abundantly more than we could ask or imagine. We have a choice to be gripped with wonder and awe, to praise God and pick up our mats, even if there is a hole in the roof, or we can hold on to our calloused hearts and selfish grievances and desires and refuse to see that Jesus is God, even when we witness his undeniable greatness 
generosity, provision, and love. I encourage you, choose well. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your extravagant love. You will always go above and beyond our wants and desires and will breathe your very spirit into us, fulfilling our deepest needs. Help us, God, to see and accept the gifts that you have to offer us every single day. Help us to come to you expectantly and willing to see what you show us, even when it is beyond our wildest imaginations. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks for listening to Women World Leaders Podcast. Join us each Monday, Wednesday, and Friday as we explore together God's extravagant love and your courageous purpose. Visit our website at www.womenworldleaders.com to submit a prayer request, register for an upcoming event, and support the ministry. From his heart to yours, we are Women World Leaders. All content is copyrighted by Women World Leaders and cannot be used without express written.